Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we are going to be going over the dynamic EQ in Ozone 8. It's much like a regular EQ, but it's dynamic. And what does that mean? Well, it is kind of like multiband compression without crossovers. So it's just a, a different way of working. And to avoid confusion and me confusing myself, I'm going to only use one band. That is band one. All right, very cool. And for the sake of uh, uh, the best example, I'm just going to use a uh, shelf here. So you'll notice that it has a down arrow here. That's because it's set to reducing the volume once it's gone over the threshold. You can also increase the volume when it's gone over a threshold. So this is this is pretty neat. So there's a there's a few things to uh, look into, but I'm just gonna play it, and you're gonna notice that the volume is being reduced. This this white line here is the uh, the EQ part of it. You're not actually EQing anything. You're just telling the EQ where to go when it goes above a certain threshold. So this is the maximum amount that the gain can be reduced. We can also increase the threshold. So what is this doing? This is attenuating the high end. It's compressing the high end, but only this area. Then I can adjust that, uh, you know, kind of like this. Right? And what's really cool and really useful, I'll just add another band just for fun, is you can, I guess, no, nope, let's not add another band. This is a better example. We can go up so we can have it kind of slope down, but when it goes above a certain threshold, the volume will be increased. And that's a little bit low, so we will turn off the auto scale. The auto scale I'll get into a little bit later. Right, so you can see the EQ is dancing, which is pretty cool. So I'll turn on auto scale. Uh, let's get another band in here. Uh, we can do another example of boosting something. Or you can have this just gently riding a particular band that's kind of going crazy. But you'll notice that the scale is changing. Let's turn that off. The uh, attack and release are changing depending on what frequency we're in. And this is to prevent uh, distortion because lower frequencies require a faster attack and a release of that nature. Faster attack, faster release, just because the waveform is longer. And as you move up, it'll contextually change the release and attack that makes sense musically, which is pretty neat. So another thing you can do is kind of do this, and you can kind of control the bass a bit more on the low end. Right, and uh, yeah, that's basically, uh, basically it right there. And yeah, you can do all sorts of stuff. I don't know if that makes any sense. Oh, and the knee is uh, automatically adjusted there as well, which is pretty neat. Um, yeah, that's a dynamic EQ, and it's meant to be used kind of uh, in conjunction with, you know, a lot of other effects to kind of stack up and, you know, uh, smooth out your track. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very common. Like an, an example is using multiple compressors in series uh, so it's the compressor is like the compression is not as obvious. It's important to kind of have things. You know, I I can't say that enough. It's like less is more. You know, it's just a a lot of reduction over time will uh, really add to your sound and uh, make things sound really cool. So yeah, use this if there's a particular frequency that's bothering you. Um, you know, I tend to have it around here. Right, and you can't even hear it, but there's a major difference. 
and it's adjusting uh, the balance and tone of it. Anyway, hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.